What's the O2 levels? O2 levels are holding, boss. Rich, methane levels? Methane levels are 12%, boss. Well, that explains it. Fire damp, boys. No, wait a minute, let me rephrase that. 12% and rising. Rising? How can they be rising after the explosion? We're in a contained area. There's no place for the methane to vent. What's that now? That's time. Drill's over. Good job, guys. And I gotta wash the jacket off tonight. So did we survive? <laughs> this time. Hey, man. I'm gonna take off. All right, where are you going? I'm just gonna shower at home. Yeah, I got some stuff to take care of tonight. All right, see you. Hey, happy birthday, buddy. Thanks, Marco. Does he have any idea? No. At least he better not. Denise would kill me. <laughs> I'll see you there. All right. This is St. Michael's, Indiana. Nah, you wouldn't know it today, but this was really once a boom town with over 22,000 people in it. See, we're a town of industry. Back in the old days, there was a textile mill, four different manufacturing plants, the coal mine, and a bottling factory. We actually had 43 saloons in this town at one time. Not exactly the greatest claim to fame, but you know, it shows that there was a vibrant nightlife. Slowly though, time had its way with St. Michael's. Now the recession hit the town hard and the plants and the factories, they began to close. Most of the bars shut down, and the ones that didn't, they became havens for those that indulged in a little too much. Somehow though, some way, St. Michael survived. Sure, a lot of the residents left, but we're still here. Then 1991 happened. Now, I don't mean the whole year, I'm just one moment. The one that's come to define the town the most probably read about it when the Carter Hill mine exploded on November 9th 1991 it was like the town came to a complete stop and when they were finally able to get to those trapped miners 33 were dead including my father Gino Rossi and my wife's father Toby Hill only two made it out and it took a while but life hit went on in St. Michael's. We even had a reason to smile in 2004 when our little high school managed to win the state football championship of a much bigger school from Westland. I was the quarterback for that team and I guess you can say that that was pretty much the highlight of my life. So far. But you know life has a way of turning on a dime and just like St. Michael's changed. To Richard Alm. Yeah, he's uh, he's about ready for retirement, isn't he? It's, it's here. Um, a sixty-one, and he's been with the company for forty-three years. Man, that's a long time. <sighs> Especially these days. Well, I guess we'll give him early retirement. He uh, <laughs> he really deserves it. Good, I will start a new pile for Rich. You sure you want to do that, Dad? I'm sure, Ryan. You know, some of these guys have taken good care of us, and we got to do all we can do to take care of them. All right. Okay, we are uh, on to Marco Betta. Why do I know that name? Well, he's the one whose wife is a little, you know. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure. His name kind of sounds familiar. Oh, yep, that's what I thought. He's had four write-ups in the last three years. Yeah, there's no way we can keep Marco on. No, that's an easy decision. Well, you know these guys better than I do, Shane. It's been a long time. I cannot believe this is happening. Bob, there's no way this town's going to survive this. Oh, I have no choice, Shane. I mean, 
the mine isn't making any money uh, we're not making any money uh, I probably should have known about this a long time ago but kept putting it off I wish you would have known that before you moved me out here to take over this place dad well I really thought we could pull this thing off and you know fix it but uh, the only way we can stay alive now is to to cut back and I mean cut back yeah but cutting back 75 percent the town's not going to survive it period well guys it's the only way we can survive i i really don't have a choice now well i guess it's better than cutting back a hundred percent who's next uh chris rossi rossi mm. oh we got to keep chris yeah uh, he's a legacy around here. You, you know, his dad was here back in 91. Oh, yeah, Gina was a good guy. Heck of a guy. Well, not just that, but, uh, I mean, the guys respect him. He's uh, his best sight foreman we've got by far. Then Rossi stays. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Rossi stays. No, no doubt Rossi stays. All right, who's next? <laughs> You didn't think I was going to send you out for milk on your birthday, well, did you? I was not, <laughs> but I spilled it. Oh, now he's crying over it. Daddy! Hey, buddy, how you doing? Here, What's I that? made this for you. Oh, my goodness. This is amazing. You made this for me. Yeah, after school. <laughs> oh, my, you're so good. Hey, Daddy. Yeah. Where's the milk? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's getting a little jittery in his old age. That's right, getting old, old man. Marco! Hello. Oh, Marco! 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 Hey, buddy. Going, brother? How are you? Good. So you knew about this? Knew about it? Who do you think threw this whole thing together? My guess would be Denise. Uh, yeah, but who do you think helped her? Elizabeth. Your mother-in-law? I'm sure she did, but who do you think didn't mess it up by letting you know about it? No, that would be you. Happy B-Day, old man. <laughs> what are you now? You. Hmm, 42, 43? 29. Come on, you know that. And as I remember, one of us, you, are going to be 30 this year. Not anytime soon, buddy. Besides, since you're here, 30's the new 25. <laughs> hey, don't you remember us talking about putting that sandwich shop together once we got our 30s? You do make a killer sandwich. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen her. Is, is Janet here tonight? Uh, she, uh, she could make it, you know. She got stuck at work. I think she's gonna try to stop by later. Okay, well, that's cool. Look, all this sandwich talk making me hungry. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna go check out with Denise the lovely food that she made for this little shitty mm -hmm. pig. Joe, what happened? I went to the store yesterday and your shop was all closed up. Yeah, we finally had to shut it down. We just can't compete with the Home Depot in Westland. I'm so sorry. I guess we're just the latest casualty in St. Michael's. So what are you guys gonna do? It looks like we're gonna have to move in with my parents in Evansville. Oh, hey babe. It'll be all right. We'll get it all figured out. Besides, what are you sad about? It's your parents we're moving in with. Michael, how you doing, buddy? So glad to see you. I'm so glad you could come. Hey, no problem. Thanks for the invite. This is my wife, Monica. Pleasure to meet you. And likewise. You know, knucklehead. Yeah. Honey, 
This is Marco. Okay. It's a pleasure to meet you, my dear. Oh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh you'll get used to Marco. He's a bit of a hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stop already. What are you doing? <laughs> Look, guys, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know that Denise knew you guys. Oh, she doesn't. I invited him. You know, you got to get the newbies out of the house from time to time. Hey, Chris. I hope it's all right that we came. Besides, Marco said this was going to be the party of the year. Okay. Party of the year. You said this was going to be the party of the year. All right, we got a lot to live up to. <laughs> Anyways, guys, again, thank you so much for coming. And that's right, tomorrow, Marco and I, we're going to go to Delaney's to catch the game. You want to join us? I appreciate oh, the offer. We, we actually go to. Well, we got other plans tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, sure. We'll do it some other time, right? Okay, excellent. All right, you guys. Get yourself something to eat, you know, because some of the people around here, it's not going to last long. All right, you guys, be good, be safe. I'm going to go talk to some more people. See you later. Bye. So, having fun? I am having the absolute best time. <laughs> thank you so much for this party. Well, happy birthday, love. Oh, thank you. Did you talk to Janet today? No, I tried calling, but she didn't answer her phone. Okay. Marco say anything? No, just that she's working late again. Chris, I think it's time you tell him. What am I gonna say? I don't know, but he's your best friend. He needs to know what's going on. We don't even know what's going on. I mean, if this is true, this could crush him. What with the rumors going around? It's That's not what they are. They're just rumors. Come on, and, and to bring it up to him, it's not gonna do us any good. I just don't wanna see Marco get hurt. I can't believe Janet would do this to him. Look, you keep telling me the Bible says, judge not lest, lest you be, be judged. judged, right? So I don't think that, that we should be talking about this. Yeah, we would be the only ones in town that weren't. It's not our job to judge what she may or may not be doing. I'm leaning on the side of what she is doing. Look, if I need to talk to Marco, I will. But right now, I just want to enjoy my party. Please. Okay. Thank you, baby. Come on, let's go. Marco, ha ha, buddy. Thank you for everything, man. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Thanks for playing. Have a good night. Thank you. All right, you get out. Take it easy. All right, thanks. Good night. See you guys later. Good night. Busters, boys. You know, it's a good thing that generation is leading our country now. Now, come on, Rich. After 40 years, you can't tell me you hadn't seen a lot of guys like that. For 40 years, Earl, about all I've seen here is you. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I don't got to put up with clowns like that too much longer. In six months, I'm going to be retired. Dorothy and I will be on our way to Florida. Yeah. And I'll be four months behind you. Can you imagine that? A couple old timers <laughs> taking on the beaches. <laughs> <laughs> Florida ain't gonna know what oh, hit them. I hear you. That's funny. <laughs> Let's do this. Hey, we substitute provolone cheese for American 
That sandwich would be amazing. You're like always thinking about this sandwich shop. I gotta do something to keep myself busy, man. Morning, ladies. Jimmy. Clint. Well, well. You know, I heard that you had a party this weekend. What? Are we too good to attend? I guess your invites got lost in the mail. I bet it was quite the throwdown. Some punch, game of battleship, <laughs> out by the bounce house. <laughs> Meh, you guys probably wouldn't have liked it anyways, you know, with deodorant being mandatory and all. Oh, well I know two girls from Westland that did not mind the smell of a man this weekend. <laughs> is that what it is, huh? Oh, I, I would have guessed a uh, wet dog. What does that smell, Marco? Is that the smell of a sissy? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's enough, guys. Yeah. I see how it is, Chris. It doesn't surprise me, though. You've been fighting his battles for years. Yeah, well, at least he was enough to take the state championship game from you Westland boys all by himself. Well, that game was a fluke and you know it! All I know is, is that uh, St. Michael's was state champs and Westland was what? Runners up? Wait, 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 hey, that's enough. Guys, look, guys! That game was 11 years ago. That's yesterday's news. <laughs> Figured you'd say something like that, Rossi. I'm still telling you. Say that game was fixed. The only thing that needed fixing was that stink coming from Wesson's locker room. Oh yeah, you would know, wouldn't you, towel boy? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Guys, can I have your attention, please? Uh, I want to go over a couple of things before you you head down this morning. Uh, first off, Wednesday's union meeting has been canceled. Oh boy, there goes my whole week. <laughs> Relax, Marco. You already have two write-ups this year. Okay, let's see. What else? Uh, it is time to re-up your insurance paperwork, so you need to make sure you get that to HR before the end of the week. Also, the weekend shift found a crack near the 100-foot mark just past shaft 2. Now, they shorted it up, but it's still considered a bad top. I figured it came from the last month's blast at 1,500 feet. Did Drew check on that? Yeah, Drew, Drew safety team checked it out yesterday. They, they cleared it, so uh, we're all good. Okay, and there's one more thing. Uh-oh, that don't sound good. Guys, I met with uh, Shane and my dad this weekend, and um, the mine's in trouble. What do you mean in trouble? I mean, you're not talking more layoffs. Yeah. Shane, what kind of layoffs are we talking about? Big. Big cuts. 70-75%. Whoa! Whoa! whoa, whoa. Okay, Come on! Guys, guys, please, please. You need to settle down. Settle down? You're laying off 75% of us and you want us to calm down? Well, this was not an easy decision to make. We either had to make some cuts or we have to shut the mine down completely. There's already been cutbacks. All right, with the textile mill closing down last year, this mine is all this town has left. Chris, we know. Guys, I know. My dad knows. Look, I don't know what else to tell you, but these cuts have to be made. We'll be talking with each of you over the next couple days, and we'll let you know where you stand. There's going to be a press conference tonight, so be prepared for the firestorm from the rest of the town. I'm sorry, guys. Chris, I need you to stop by my office before you head down, okay? Okay. Marco, do me a favor. Make sure the guys get to 1,100 feet. I'll be there in a minute. No problem, Mr. Foreman. Let me knock it off. <laughs> Yep, 
have a seat, Chris. So this is it? This is what? Uh, you're just gonna call guys in, let them go, tell them thanks, not take a hike? Look, we had nothing to do with this. I had nothing to do with this. This was Bob's decision. Ryan backed him up. It's not my mind. It's theirs, okay? <laughs> All right, so what now? Are you letting me go? No, I'm not. As a matter of fact, you're one of the first people I convinced them we needed to keep on. <laughs> what? We need you, Chris. I mean, the guys listen to you. They respect you. Production is up on your shift, and <laughs> I mean, it's down on everybody else's. All right. What about the rest of my guys? You got Marco, Rich, Earl, you know, my crew. Right, right. Well, you know, we, we look through all their files. Okay. Um, Jimmy and Clint, we're going to let them stay on. Richard and Earl, we're going to give them early retirement. Um, but Michael Duncan, he just doesn't have the time in. We're going to have to let him go. <laughs> all right. What about Marco? I'm gonna have to let Marco go, Chris. What? The man's had four write-ups in the last three years. Shane, Marco, he's been going through a lot. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I've heard the rumors, but I mean, there's nothing I can do. How can you just sit there and applaud my work and then you're telling me you're letting half my crew go? Look, Chris, the cuts are across the board. It's everybody. Look, Shane. I gotta get back to work. But you know what? These men, this town, I don't think they can handle one more blindsided shot. There's only so much they can take. We care very much for the families in this community. All right, I'll take any uh, questions you may have. Mr. Freeman, was this a hard decision to make? How long have you known that something needed to be done? I mean, this was a very difficult decision for my father and I to make. Um, we've known for a couple months now that something was going to need to, something needed to be done, but it really wasn't until the last week or so that we realized the type of cutbacks we were going to have to make. Yes, but aren't you worried about what these layoffs are going to do to St. Michael's? Of course we are. Um, but in all honesty, we're more worried about what would happen to St. Michael's if we had to close the mine completely. So, Mr. Freeman, what are we talking about? What percentage are you going to lay off? Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, baby. You hey, little man. Oh, come give Daddy a hug, everybody. Ooh. Day. Awesome, Daddy. We got to play dodgeball, and I got hit in the head three times. <laughs> I bet it finally knocked some sense into you. <laughs> Anyways, anytime getting the word out. I can't believe this. You got any dinner left? Do you guys have any idea? No, not a clue. All I know is that Ryan and Shane, they came in the morning meeting and they said they were cutting 75%. What about you? I mean, are you... I know what you mean, and Shane told me that they want to keep me. Oh, thank God. Thank you, God. You okay? They want to get rid of Marco. I just want to let him go. Oh, no. Yeah, and the rest of my crew, they, they're they giving early retirement to Rich and Earl. I just let Michael go. And Michael and his wife just moved here. I know. This sucks. But poor Marco. He's not need this right now. No, no one in this town does. He didn't pray. What? Wait, you, you didn't pray. Dear God, thank you for the food. 
Thank you for the protection of our house and thank you for many gifts. Amen. At least you get to stay. I mean, I feel bad about the other guys. At least you get to stay. Yeah. I'm not so sure, though. What? I'm not so sure I want to stay. What do you mean? All I know is that St. Michael's is on the verge of going over the cliff. All right, for years it's been like that, and I just think that this is gonna push it over. But this is home. Baby, no. No, 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 no. Home is anywhere that you, me, and Vince are. With the mind cutting back the way that it is, it's not gonna be long before it goes under completely. I think. I know. But Denise, maybe it's time that we think about making a change. I don't know, maybe... We think about doing something new, somewhere new. If not for us, let's do it for Vince. All right, but let's not rush things. Let's pray on it, see where God leads us. You got it, Mr. Rossi. Deuteronomy 31.8 It's the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Hey, Michael, you see Marco? Shane called him to his office. When? About a half hour ago. All right, did he say what for? Not to me. Hey, where are you going? Heading to the unemployment line, I guess. What? Yeah, they just gave me my walking papers. Two more weeks, I'm out of here. Man. Marco, I, I'm so sorry. If there is anything that I can uh, do, I don't you sweat out it, man. You know, Janet and I, we've, we've been through tougher things than this. Besides, you know, God's obviously got a plan for us, and it's not here. Hey, I still got that gig leading you in a choir at church. 
Marky, you do realize that that is a volunteer position. <laughs> yeah, well, that just means they can't fire me. You know, besides, the Bible says, you know, he will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. You know what? That sounds really familiar for some reason. Come on, let's get out of here. No. Wait. You know, I'll be there in just a minute. You go ahead. Are you okay? You know, Marco, for the first time in my life, I am. I am okay. Wish I could say the same. Hey, Shane, you got a minute? Yeah, what's up? Shane, I've been giving this a lot of thought, all right? And I know that you've been having a tough time with these cutbacks, so I'm gonna make it easier on you. Uh, okay, what are you talking about? I'm resigning. At least that's what I think I'm doing. I'm turning in my notice. Uh, your what? I know how this works. Would you have these cutbacks now? Six months, maybe a year from now, you're gonna have more cutbacks? Maybe this is a sign for me to move on. Move on? What do you... What do you mean, move on, Chris? I fought for you to stay here. I need you here. No. You don't need me, Shane. All right, I need a change. And my family, we need to make a change. I told you that I was going to make these cutbacks easier, so I'm walking away. But I need you to give Marco my job. All right, he's been here just as long as I have. The guys, they respect him. Yeah, he's had a couple of rough years. But he is the right guy for this job, Shane. You gotta keep him. I can't believe I'm hearing this right now. The town needs you, Chris. The mine needs you. You can't just, just what, desert him? Desert? I'm, Shane, I'm not deserting anyone. All right, I'm doing this for my family. No, you're not doing this for your family. You're doing this to show me up. You're doing this because you're a what? A, a what, Shane? A, I'm a what? You're a coward. You're a coward, Chris. The town needs you, and you, oh, you're just going to walk away. I am not the savior of St. Michael's, Shane. Well, maybe St. Michael's needs you more than you realize, Chris. I'm just a regular guy. All right, maybe I won a state football championship 11 years ago. But right now, I'm just like you. I'm a regular guy. No, you're not a regular guy. You're a coward. How dare you call me a coward? All right? At least I go back in that mine every single day. When was the last time you went there? No, no, what's it been? 25 years? No, no. No, you do not. You do not go there. You didn't see what I saw, Chris. You didn't live through it, okay? Yeah, but my dad did. Denise's dad did. Shane, a lot of guys in this town went through it. The only difference is you came out. They didn't. You don't know what you're talking about. I have a daughter now. And I have a wife and a son. All right, Shane, I know exactly what you're talking about. You came out and 33 others didn't. But you, you, you refuse to think how fortunate you are. I mean, you just, just sit in this office every single day, refusing to face that fear. So how dare you call me a coward? Get out. Get out of here! You want to turn in your notice? Consider it turned in. Get out! quiet down so we can talk about this. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. Um, I know we're all uh, frustrated about the closing of the mine, but what we need to do is we need to try to find some solutions. We don't need to yell at each other. That's not going to help anything. 
What kind of solution? This town is going to absolutely die. First, the textile mill. And now this. I worked 35 years. And in one day, poof, it's gone. Come on, guys. Isn't there something else we can do? Can't the union do something to stop this? Uh, no, no, Annie. We, we've checked with the union, and the union can't uh, stop the, you know, the cutbacks. They, they don't have the authority. Where's Chris? I want to hear what he has to say. Chris. Chris Rossi. You here? Chris. Yeah, I'm right here. Your dad uh, ran a mine for 20 years. What are your thoughts on this? I don't think there's anything we can do about it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's, ca let's calm down, folks. Let's calm down, folks. What do you mean, Chris? I mean that there's nothing that we can do. All right, Bob Freeman, he owns that mine and his son runs it day to day, I mean, it's their mind. They decide what they want to do to it. If they want to shut it down, they can shut it down. There's nothing I can do about that. Oh, that's easy for you to say, Chris. I heard you didn't even get laid off. That's right. No, 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 you're, that's right. I wasn't laid off. Denise and I, we've decided that we're leaving St. Michael's. No, I can't. I gave my notice last week. Chris, Chris, you've been a part of this community for like for forever. I know, you're right, and it's time for a change. You all said it yourself. St. Michael's is dying. Oh, come on, Chris. You're just going to sit back and let it die? There's nothing I can do, folks. I can't do anything about this. Come on. All right, guys, you're always you're looking to my family for answers. Don't you guys realize I'm not my dad? I don't have the answers for all of us, okay? The only answers I have right now is for my family and what's best for my family. And what that is right now, we gotta go. We gotta start somewhere new. Let's, come on, son. Come on. Look. I'm sorry. Hey man, don't worry about it. These guys are just probably jealous that uh, they didn't have the good sense to get out of here when you know, they had the chance. They've been looking at me like this for the last two weeks. Yeah, well, after today, you ain't got to worry about it. So, uh, what time are you guys leaving tomorrow? Picking up the truck after work. You know, hopefully get it loaded tonight. I'm telling you, I'm going to get me some sleep and I'm leaving first thing in the morning. Last day of school for Vince too, huh? How's he handling it? He's like, yeah, you know, he's going to miss his friends, but he'll be fine. Yeah, kid's got tough skin. But it's Denise I'm worried about. She's taking it the hardest. See, it's because she's doing all the packing, right? She's boxing up all the old memories? Yeah, I bet. You just make sure she puts the pillows in the boxes I'm going to be lifting tomorrow. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that she puts your name on the boxes with the books. <laughs> I'm sure going to miss you, pal. <laughs> Come on, we're just going to Indy. It's an hour and a half away. Yeah, but I don't mean to be sappy, you know, but you're my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> we knock it off. Look, I, I am truly sorry that they didn't give you my job. Like, I tried really hard. It's just, I think Shane had his mind made up. Ah, uh, it's no big deal, you know? It gives me more time at church. Besides, I've been thinking about giving Avon a try. Or is it Mary Kay? <laughs> Using or selling. Come on, man. Could you see me driving around in that pink Cadillac? <laughs> That would be quite a sight. Yeah, it's really no big deal. I figure, you know, click the unemployment, uh, you know, try something new. Then heck, maybe me and Jana, you know, we'll head to Indy with you guys. Jan, how are things going with you guys? Uh, you know, they're going. Forget about that. It's our last day together buried in the ground, you know? Let's enjoy it. Okay, Marco. Thanks, Polo. <laughs> hey. Did you picture it? Marco's sub shop. You are such a happy Come on, man. Such a goof.
You know how I can tell it's time for retirement, Earl? Because the mining company told you that you got to? No. I know it's time to retire because my foreman's half my age. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hey, come on, old timers. Y'all ain't retired yet. Heck, man, y'all got one more day of dragging your sorry bones down into that hole. <laughs> Rich, that's how I know it's time for me to retire. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Bob, he quit. It's his last day. He's not staying. He doesn't want to stay. Well, then make him want to stay. If it's money he wants, offer him more money. But I want you, Shane, to make sure that Chris Rossi stays with this company before he leaves today. It's bad enough we're getting press over all these cutbacks, and I don't need more bad press over Chris Rossi and all of his lineage. I mean, everybody knows him in town, at the mine, everywhere. So we just don't need this, okay? Bob, Shane. I... Just get it done. I gotta get a new job. The way things are going, you may not have a choice. Hey, you know what? If SpongeBob were real, there's no way he could live in the water. Because he would just sink to the bottom every time. Marco, I am really going to miss your musings. Uh, you can call me for insights anytime. I may just have to do that. <laughs> Rossi! Rossi! Honey, are you sure about this move? I don't see we have a choice. I mean, Chris has got a great job lined up in Indy. And there's nothing left for us here anymore. Excuse me. You know what I mean. Mom, I love you. I love St. Michael's, but besides you, there's nothing left. Especially not for Vince. I mean, his school enrollment is down under 100 kids. I understand. I know that you and Chris need to do what's best for all of you. But honey, I'm just going to miss you so much. Don't cry, Mom. Because if you cry, then I'm going to cry, and I don't have time to cry. I know, honey. I'm sorry. OK, let's pack. Marco! 
Michael, is that you? Chris? Yeah. Yeah. You all right? I think so. What about you? I'm fine. Do you have any idea who else is down here? I don't see anything, Chris. Marco! 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 Michael, it's Marco. Oh, Marco, man. <laughs> you know, guys, it's not as bad as you think. <laughs> it doesn't really hurt at all. Chris. What happened, man? I don't know. Do you know who else is down here? No. I mean, the whole crew was en route, but I don't know how far they got. All right, guys, we just, we need to relax. This is what we train for. Train for? <coughs> train for? Chris, I don't know if you know this, but we train to mine. We don't train to die. Jimmy, relax. All right, let's just figure out what we gotta do. Look around, man. What can we do? We're gonna die down here. Jimmy, relax. Chris, right. I have seen this on TV. I need your help here, Jimmy. I need you to see. All right, go back deep in the mine. See if we get down where the air shafts are. Deeper. Air shaft. Are you crazy? Jimmy, I need your help here. Nice job, Chris. We all gotta keep our cool right now. Yeah. Father, I ask that you get us out of here. Thank you for all your blessings. And we love you, Lord. What was that? What was what? I mean, what you were just whispering. Oh, uh, I say a little prayer. I didn't know you were religious. <laughs> Chris, there's a lot of things you guys don't know about me. The radio. Marco, you got that radio? Where is it? Uh-oh. I guess that's the last time you'll be having me carry the radio. <laughs> it's the last time any of us are going to be carrying this radio, remember? Once we find a way out of here, we're out of here. That's right. We're out of here. <coughs> Anyone? Can, can you read me? Come in. Chris. Buddy. Can anyone read me? Dad, you there? Yeah, yeah. What, uh, what happened? Was it an explosion? I don't think so, sir. None of our meters indicate any methane emissions or ignitions. So what are we looking at, Marty? Our best guess? We're looking at a collapse. Collapse? How deep? We don't know for sure. We believe it's somewhere between 80 and 120 feet. Well, what is it? 80 or 120, Marty? <sighs> We went through the reports and we discovered that there was a bad top reported a couple of weeks ago. It was supposedly fixed. How deep, Marty? How deep was the bad top report? 94 feet, sir. Well, 94 feet isn't that deep. I mean, we can dig down 94 feet and get the guys out of there, but we gotta get going. It's not gonna be that simple, sir. Well, what are you trying to say, Marty? From an engineering standpoint, it's not going to be that simple. If that collapse was at 94 feet, that's right where this shaft starts to turn. Look, Marty, I know how the mine is cut, but what does that have to do with it? What are you trying to say? Sorry, sir. The best that we can tell is that this collapse completely filled shaft one. If we drill straight down into shaft two, 
that we think is still open and where we hope our guys are, the drilling could compromise the integrity of the top of shaft too. The weight of the rock above could collapse the entire mine. So what do we do? And don't tell me we can't get the guys out of there. Sir, the only thing we can do is start digging them out from the top and work our way in. We can get our boys out. Theoretically, yes. But we have another issue to deal with. Why, Marty? It's oxygen. If there's a seal at the top of shaft one, and nothing else is caved in, they should be able to get oxygen from these two lines running in to shaft two. But if there's a collapse at any point in shaft two... What? What, Marty? Then they don't have any oxygen getting in there. So what you're trying to say is, even if they survive the collapse... Yeah, I could suffocate. Good Lord. This is not good. How much longer can they keep us? I need to know something. I know, honey. All we can do is be patient right now, because I'm sure they're doing everything they can. It's not enough! Denise? Janet, over here. Is it? Are they? Yeah, they're both in there. What happened? How did this happen? I'm sure God. we don't know yet. They haven't told us anything. All we know is who's in there. So, so all they told you is that Chris and Marco were in there. Are. Are in there. What? Chris and Marco, they are in there. And that is what we are going to focus on right now. We have no reason to believe anything else. Do you understand me? Yes, yes, yes. Do you understand? Me? Yeah. Oh. This, I need to come out of this. I need to come out for so many reasons. I just. I know, I Janet. I need to come out. I know how you feel. No, I don't, I don't think you truly know. You know what we need to do? We need to pray. And we need to pray harder <laughs> than we've ever prayed in our lives. She's right. We need to pray for the men in there. For everyone out here. Yes. <laughs> Dear Lord, we come to you in our time of greatest desperation. <laughs> In our hour of greatest need, we ask you, God, for the safety of all the men under the ground. And we ask you, Lord, to bring them back to us. And we ask you for peace. For all the people gathered here, the families, the friends, gathered together in fear, and in hope, and in support. Oh, we know you're a merciful God, and we know you hear our prayers. Oh, dear Lord, if it's your will, bring them back to us safely. It's your will be done, Lord. It's in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Where's my dad? Lacey. Where's my dad? Mr. Rossi, where's my dad? Oh, honey. He's in there. No. He, he can't be in there. He never goes down in the mine. They said he's one of the guys down there. No, they, they're not. No. It's okay. He never goes down there. It's okay. I never see you in church, Michael. Well, let's just say some small towns ain't too welcoming to new people. What do you mean? He's talking about black people, Chris. He's saying St. Michael's, it ain't the most accepting place for black folk. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know. Well, 
down here right now, we pretty much all look the same, don't we? That's what I imagine it looks like in heaven, too. Yeah, you know, guys, I'm all in favor of talking about church and such. Don't you think we should be trying to find a way out of here? I think I may need a doctor. Should we try and get him out of here? No, I, we don't know if he's hurt or how bad he's hurt. Hey, who's over there? Clint, is that you? Yeah, I found him. I stepped on his hand. You all right? Yeah. Who got there with you, Rossi? Michael and Marco. Oh, man. Yeah, you guys ain't exactly looking amazing either. Look, guys, we got to try to figure a way out of here. I mean, Marco needs our help. Jimmy, what'd you find out? Thank good. It's caved in. Both sides. Right at the turn. I couldn't see a thing. How are we gonna get out of here, man? If we are where I think we are, there should be a supply locker around here with some flashlights. At least then we can see around, right? All right, everybody spread out. Let's go find that locker. I think I'll just stay put. You gonna be all right for a few minutes? Ah, uh, don't worry about me, Polo. I'll be fine. <laughs> Earl, <laughs> you all right? I think so. My head is hurt. My my leg, but uh, nothing permanent. Doesn't look too bad. Earl, you see Rich? Earl, where's Richard? <laughs> Just one more day, you old coaches. And the last one more day, we would be fishing in Florida. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Earl. I know you and Rich were close. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Found it. Earl, I will be right back. <laughs> Jimmy! Over here, Chris. Let's see if there's any water. All right, what'd you guys find? A whole lot of nothing. This works. Let me go check out Marco. It's better than nothing. Mom, you awake? I'm awake, honey. But you know what? You need some sleep. Let me take you and Vince home for a little while. Can I ask you a question? Anything. It's about Dad. What do you want to know? Is this what it was like when it happened with him? I don't remember anything. Well, you were younger than Vince is now. So long ago. The last time something like this happened with the mine. How did you... How did you handle it when you found out? I mean, when you found out that Dad didn't make it? Well, when this is all over, you and I are gonna sit down and I'll tell you everything that you want to know, but right now, that's nothing you need to think about. We have no reason to believe that Chris and all those men are not gonna walk out of that mine just fine. How do you stay so positive, Mom? Faith, I guess. The same faith that I've instilled in you since the day you were born. I have faith, Mom, but I'm still scared. Me too, honey. Fear is a natural human emotion. It's normal. But it's not God's best for us. You remember that verse that I used to read to you from the Bible when you were little and afraid? It's 
from the book of Isaiah. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. And I will strengthen you, and I will help you, and I will hold you up with my right hand. God understands that we're going to be afraid. But he also wants us to know that he's right there with us in the good times and the bad. I need him to come out, Mom. I don't know what I'd be without Chris. Whatever happens, honey, I want you to remember that you told him everything he needed to know. I've watched you. There was nothing you held back. So, how's everyone holding up? Look at you, don't worry about that. We're just gonna worry about getting you out of here. Chris, don't play Dr. Phil good with me, man. Just answer the question. All right, I don't know. I mean, look, Clint and Jimmy, they're out there looking for a way out. And Michael's sitting there talking to Earl. Rich didn't make it. Earl, he's, he's having a rough time with it. You know, those two are just like us. Yeah, Michael's a good guy. He'll know what to say. What do you think's going on outside? What do you mean? I mean, do you think there's a bunch of people standing around together, singing songs and holding hands? <laughs> I don't know about all that, but I do know that Elizabeth and Denise are out there, and I bet the town, they're giving them the cold shoulder right about now. Ah, don't be so cynical, Chris. This town ain't so bad. Besides, there's one thing I can say about St. Michael's is everyone comes together when they have to. Yeah, I just hope you're right about that. You think Janet's out there? What do you mean? You think Janet's out there? Yeah, Janet's out there. She's your wife. Where else would she... I'm not an idiot, Chris. What are you talking about? About Janet? I've heard all the rumors too, Chris. I know, but those, they're just stupid rumors, Marco. Nobody believes any of that. They're true. What? The rumors are true. What are you talking about? I know Janet's having an affair. And I've known for a long time. Heck, I don't even know who she's having an affair with. You've known for a long time and you haven't said anything. It's not exactly something I'm proud of, Chris. Did you ever say anything to Janet? No. I could never figure out how to. Did you ever think about leaving her? More than a few times. What stopped you? Love. Love? Yeah, I... I love her too much. I, I knew what was going on, but... I just love her too much to walk away. You know... Janet and I, we could never have kids. Uh, but I always thought I'd be a great dad. You would be a great dad. But it, uh, it wasn't in the cards. It wasn't, it wasn't in God's plan. So I, I focused all my attention on just being a great husband. You know, just being a the best husband I possibly possibly could be. Uh, I thought a part of that was just loving her unconditionally. And loving her the way that God tells a man he should love his wife. I thought I thought she would figure it out and things would be great between us. 
I know, I know it's hard to understand, but believe me, I fought with myself time and time again. Now, I just always believe that God had a plan for Janet and me, and that something, something great was going to happen. Yeah, Marco, I... Hey, Chris! I think you better come here. All right. Look, I'm gonna be right back. died when I was born. I never knew her. Sorry. Dad's done a good job, though. He's done a great job. Mrs. Rossi, do you think they're going to be all right? You know, in there? Can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah. Uh, sweetheart, why don't you go get some sleep? All right, Mrs. Rossi. She's a sweet kid. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? I mean, with all this. All right. I mean, Vince is really scared, so I'm just trying not to look as terrified as I feel. This is how your dad died, isn't it? Yeah. Chris's dad died then, too. Your mom, she's really a saint, you know? Yeah, she's keeping me strong. I gotta tell you something. I gotta tell someone. Let's head over there. I'm sure this is the worst kept secret in town, but... What is it? I've been cheating on Marco. You don't have to fake it. I know how this town is. I just, I just hope that Marco doesn't know. Can I ask? I mean, why cheat? You know, Denise, I, I really don't know. You know, I look at you and Chris and I see how great things are. I just wonder where everything went wrong with me and Marco when things spiraled out of control. Everything used to be great. Two kids and love and then and something changed. Marco changed? No. That's just it. I did. I changed. Marco... After all these years, he stayed the same loving, caring, sweet husband he's always been. The type of guy that every girl dreams to meet someday. If Marco didn't change, what changed about you? You know, Denise, I really don't know. He's always happy. So happy. And me, I'm always sad. And I don't know why. I'm never happier than my husband. Is, is that crazy or what? Well, if you don't know why you're sad, do you know what made him so happy? At first, I thought that he was having an affair. That maybe, just maybe, I did something to drive him away. I guess I started cheating in a way to get revenge, but that was never the case. Marco, he 
he was never cheating. And he never would. Sunday mornings after church, he would come home with a big smile on his face. And on Wednesday nights after choir practice, he was just, just like a little kid. Always smiling. Always happy. And me, I just, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I always thought of church as a nightmare. I guess every time I went in there, I just, I thought of my dad. I, I don't know why I held it against Marco. Maybe you were jealous. Jealous? Janet, you said it yourself. I mean, he was always so happy when he came home from, from church and from choir practice. And I'm in the choir. Marco's a wonderful guy. He's so full of the spirit. Maybe that's what made him so happy. His faith. So, so all these years, all these years, I've been jealous of my husband's relationship with God. Maybe. So, my husband's relationship with God drove me into the arms of another man. <laughs> what does that make me? Human. Janet, we are all imperfect creatures. We all make mistakes. Some larger than others, but we all make mistakes. I've made so many mistakes. So many. I know. And you know that now. You know you messed up, big time. But now, you can make it right. How? How can I change it with Marco? Well, before you change it with Marco, you have to change it with yourself. You have to have a relationship with God. How can God ever forgive me for what I've done? God forgives all sins. That's the great thing about his love. It's unconditional. Oh, Denise, I want that love. I want it from Marco and from God. Well, then you have to ask for it. Father, Janet knows that she has broken your laws and that her sins have separated her from you. I'm so sorry. I want to turn away from my past sinful life towards you. I know that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, and I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You believed. God heard your prayers. You're part of his family now. He knows you. And you know him. Now you can have a fresh start. Thank you. Thank you so much, Denise. I just... I just pray that I get a chance to start fresh with Marco. Amazing grace How sweet the sound That saved a wretch like me, I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I
you haven't stepped foot in the mine in 20 something years. <coughs> and <the coughs> today, you decided to come back in? Yeah. Not my best decision. All right, guys, let's leave him alone. I'm gonna go check on Earl. come down here. Uh, looking for you. Why are you looking for me? Bob wanted me to track you down. Try to convince you to stay. Shane, man, we're way past that. You know that? I know, I know, but Bob had my head if I didn't try. So how are you feeling? Can't feel my arms and legs. Try to move them. Nothing other than that good. <laughs> I feel like I got you into this. I'd be ridiculous. You had nothing to do with this. So, give me the lowdown on what's going on down here. I've been out of it a while. It looks like we're caved in, right around that supposedly repaired bed top. Looks like we're kept in on both sides. I saw Michael and the knuckleheads. Who else is down here? Richard didn't make it. And Earl, he's taking it pretty tough. And I got Marco. He's pinned down on the other side from the waist down. He doesn't look like he's gonna make it. Polo! Marco! Look, what are you take doing? This out. Look, you never take that cross out. What are you doing? I need you to do me a favor, man. I need you to give this to Janet for me. No. You give it to yourself when we all get out of here. Knock it off, Chris. Please. Chris, I need you to give this to Janet for me. I, I need you to take it. I need you to give it to her and tell her, no matter what, I loved her. Take it, Chris. Marco, I, I can't, I can't. Please, Chris, promise me you'll give it to her and tell her what I said. Promise me, Chris. I promise. Did I ever tell you that story? that my dad used to tell me when I was a kid. I don't think so, buddy. It was a story about a little boy who got caught and trapped in a cave. The cave, it was complete darkness, except for this bright light shining through a tiny crack in the wall. The kid, he just stared at the light and he, he was sure that it, it was Jesus. There was Jesus in the cave there with him watching over him. And the kid was he was in that cave for three days, just talking to the light. He, he swore it was Jesus talking back to him. Finally, when he was rescued, he was, he was told that the light was coming from outside. And all he would have had to have done was move the rocks. Out of, out of the way and, and he would have been able to get outside but he was adamant that it was Jesus the whole time in there with him a year later 
He went back. He looked inside. They saw that the light was coming from outside. He took a stick and he moved the rocks out of the way. And all of a sudden, a, a big boulder came crashing down. I mean, it, it was a huge rock. You see, if he hadn't believed, he, he would have died. And even though everyone told him that he was wrong, it was his faith and his belief that saved his life. You know, I know this isn't cool, but I never, I've never cared about being cool. I love you, man. You're my brother. Marco, don't. I'm coming, Jesus. Make room for me. It's... It's beautiful. Marco. Marco, no, my God. Come on, we're gonna get out of here. Chris, he's gone. He's with the father. Lord, welcome Marco into your glory as he leaves his broken body and enters your kingdom. Amen. What's everyone doing here? We just came to say we're sorry. For what? Oh, Denise, for what happened at the mine. And also, for how we've treated you these past two weeks, giving you the cold shoulder. Marcy, you don't have to. No, don't say that. St. Michael's, when we live here, we don't talk to people and act like we've been acting towards you. We support each other. And when you decided to leave, we turned our backs on you. That's not right, Denise. In life, there's good times and bad times. Right now, these are bad times in St. Michael's. We need to be here for you. I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. When you go in your house, you're gonna see a refrigerator full of food, and all you have to do is put it in the oven. And sweet Betty came by, and she did all your laundry, and the ladies in the town came and they tidied up your house. I hope you don't mind. And the men, they came in and they packed some of the boxes that had labels. And we have um, this for you. What's this? It's just a little gift that we wanted to give you to help you get started in Indianapolis. See, I... No, Denise. You have to keep this. This is from us. We want you to know when you leave that this will always be home and it will always be here for you. Not a bad place after all, huh? Here you go, Chris. Thanks. I hate to bring this up now, 
I mean, I don't want to pile on. We just took a reading and our oxygen levels are low. How low? Almost dangerously low. Great. Not much we can do about it right now. Can I ask you something? Sure. Why was Marco always talking about sandwiches? <laughs> I mean, it, it seems like every time I heard him talking, it was about meat, cheese, and bread. <laughs> <laughs> Marco, he always had this dream that he wanted to start his own sub shop. Right? He was always thinking about the menu, dreaming up the perfect sandwiches in his head. <laughs> oh, he cracks me up. He cracked me up. Yeah. Sorry about Marco. I knew you guys were friends. We were best friends. Marco was my best friend. You know, it was Marco who got me going back to church. Why did you stop going? I was just lazy. But you know, that was never a good enough excuse for Marco. I mean, he would come get me every Sunday. And if I was still sleeping, Come in, shake the bed. <laughs> uh, I wanted to kill him some of those days. Hey, that sounds like a really good friend to me. Can I ask you something else? Something a little more personal? Sure. What? Chris, are you saved? Yeah, and thanks to Marco. So you know he's in a better place, right? I think so. I mean, I'm not so sure anymore though. I mean, with this, I don't know what to believe anymore. Uh, Chris! Jimmy, I know about the oxygen. No, man. You need to come here real quick. Shane ain't looking so hot. Hey, I'm gonna go check on her. Hey, Chris. I want you to remember something. It says in the book of James, let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like the wave of a sea, driven and tossed by the wind. What does that mean, Michael? It means we may not always understand the things that happen to us or to others, but God always has a plan for a purpose for everything. feeling huh. how I look <laughs> it's not my job to judge huh. look Chris uh, I wanted to tell you I was sorry sorry for what for calling you a coward you were you're not a coward Chris 
Jane, I, I'm sorry. I mean, I said some things that I shouldn't have said. You know, things I didn't mean. No, no, you were right. You're spot on. I have been a coward. I lived in, in fear of this place for 20-something years. I was supposed to lead my example, but I didn't. I didn't. Huh. No. Marco, he led by example. Yeah. Clint told me he didn't make it. I'm sorry. I guess, uh... I guess he would say he was in a better place. Huh? Yeah. Guess he would. Hmm? What about you? I don't know what I believe anymore. I mean, how can God take someone like Marco? You, uh... You knew I knew your father, right? Yeah. And you told me that when I started here. What I didn't tell you was I was there when he died. Really? Yeah, I was part of his team when, when the collapse happened. You were a part of my dad's team? Yeah. Oh, man, it was the weirdest thing. And we had no idea we didn't have those, uh, those methane detectors like they have now, so... <laughs> we, we carried around a lamp with an open flame. When the flame grew, I mean, it was time to run, boy. Uh, only that day we didn't have time to run. The flame flickered, the place blew. Uh, uh, a big fireball. A rock came down all around us. Most of the guys had died instantly, but a few didn't. My dad? They said he died in the initial explosion. No, that's not true. He, he survived the initial explosion. I mean, he was hurt, but nothing fatal. We sat side by side those first few days. Really? Oh, boy. He talked about you. <laughs> Your mom. Oh, man, man, he was proud of you. How old, how old were you back then? Three or four? It was four. 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 Uh, you had your your whole life mapped out for you. It was pretty close. <laughs> close to what? He was close to being right. He said you'd be a strong man. A leader. Only four years old, but somehow he knew. I just wish I had, like, some more time with him, you know? Just another second or so. Yeah. Just before he died, he said this little, I don't know, ah. Uh, I guess it was a prayer. It sounded more like a poem to me. He said, um, Bless me, Lord. This I pray as I leave my little boy today. Let him know, please I pray, how much I loved him every day. Said that? Yeah. Yeah. I never 
forgot that. Uh, uh, uh. Here I am about to die. That's what pops into my head. There's so many things I just... I forget over the years. <laughs> There's things I should have been, things I should have said, things I should have done, things I should have done. Huh. Shane, are you saved? What? I mean, do you believe in Jesus Christ? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Well, has anyone ever told you about Jesus' love and about all that stuff he's done for us? Uh, uh. But you do know that Jesus, he is the Son of God, right? And he died and he came down from heaven to, to save us from our sins. And the only way that you can get to heaven, Shane, is by believing. Hey, hey I appreciate it, buddy, but... Uh... I don't know if, uh, it's too late for me, Chris. And now I've, I've lived too long, man. I can't, can't make up for all of it now. That's the beauty of it. You just ask for forgiveness and ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. And if you do that, and you really believe it, you get to spend eternity in paradise. Paradise be a lot better than this place, huh? I've, I've wanted something to believe in for a long time. There's nothing greater than that, Shane. I mean, my dad, he knew that. And Marco, he, he knew that, and, and I finally know that. You know, I believed before, but I finally, I really see it now. I want to see. Then will you pray with me? Father God, please forgive us our sins and come into Shane's heart and grant him peace. Please, please come into my heart, God. And take him to the other side, Father God, to stand him at your right hand. I'm ready, God. And forgive him for his sins and welcome him into your open arms. Amen. Um, I'm ready to go, Chris. I'm ready to go. Chris, no. I need you, I need you to, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to do me a favor, okay? What's that? I want you, I want you to tell Lacey that I love her more than anything in the world. I want you to tell her how her mom waited and waited and couldn't wait for for I want you I want you to tell her that her grandma will take good care of her when you do that for me. Absolutely. Good, thank you. Thank you. Shane, when you see him, will you tell my dad I love him? <sighs> All right, big guy, do your thing. Lord, welcome Shane into your glory as he leaves his broken body and enters your kingdom. Amen. And Lord, thank you for bringing Chris back to us. Lord, make him a soldier of your word and a blessing to this world. Amen. Amen. Welcome back to the family, my brother.
five and three, two. That's right, Dan. We've been told that they are getting close to pushing through to where they believe the shaft opens up. But the biggest concern at this point is the oxygen level in the mine. If there is anyone left in there, it's going to become very hard to breathe very soon. Clear. I pray that you can hear me. Hey, babe. I know you're out there. I want you to know. I need you to know how much I love you. I miss you so much, Denise. I love you so much. I miss holding you, laughing with you. I need to see you again. I need you here with me. I can everything just to be with you there right now. If I could see you and Vince. You're my world. You and Vince. I don't know what I'd do without you. If I don't make it out of here. If I don't ever see you and Vince again, just know I always loved you from the first time I met you. We have a history. We have a future. No matter what happens, it's you and me forever. I love you. Bless me, Lord, as I pray, as I leave my family today, let them know, as I pray, how much I've loved them every day. and there are survivors in there. We are anxiously awaiting them coming out. I tell you, Dan, the people here are feeling every emotion in the book. Elation, fear, anxiety, everything. Wait a minute, I think I see someone coming. Marco? 
no, 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 no. He fought hard. Gerard. He hung in there. He fought hard. He hung on. He hung on. He fought hard. Janet. He wanted you to know that he loved you. More than anything. He needed you to know that. He wanted you to know that. It's okay. He wanted me to give you this, okay? more than anything. I love you. I love you so much. Don't you ever leave me, Chris Rossi. Promise. I promise. It's me, you and Vince forever. Denise and I decided not to move. It turned out that there was something to keep us in St. Louis. Love. But we knew that if we were going to stay, we still needed to make a change. And I had the perfect plan. It's beyond. 